Uh, the course this week uh, being held here at Grand Island, which by the way is a state-of-the-art facility, uh, is a basic crime scene investigation course. We learn a little bit about how to collect evidence, how to properly package and preserve it, how to record it properly. We learn about fingerprint development this week. Uh, and again, today we also learned about blood, how to properly collect it using sterile instruments and sterile packaging medium. And we also used how to uh, learn how to enhance blood and to also enhance bloody fingerprints and of course do presumptive testing on blood. Uh, we were talking about how to do presumptive testing on blood so we don't unnecessarily ruin people's property by cutting something out that looks like blood but later proves not to be. We were also talking about blood stain interpretation today, how to go into a crime scene and look at the blood stains that are there to determine where the blood originated from when it struck the wall or the ceiling, uh, a minimum number of blows that were struck. Uh, on an individual can be determined by looking at arc patterns. Uh, we were also looking on uh, working on blood print development today using various chemicals we can use to enhance blood prints to make them identifiable. Uh, the great thing about that is, is there's really no better evidence than being able to put the fingerprint of the bad guy at the crime scene in the blood of the victim. It proves they were there at the time of violence and that's excellent evidence for the jury. The uh, chemicals that we used in our practical just a few minutes ago, we used the phenolphthalein presumptive blood test. That is generally considered uh, in the law enforcement world uh, to be the best, uh, most proven presumptive blood test. If you get a positive reaction with phenolphthalein, uh, in most every instance, this stain will prove out to be blood. So if you're at a crime scene, you think something looks like blood, again, before you cut it out and destroy somebody's car or carpet, uh, you do the presumptive blood test. If it indicates that blood may be present by a color change, then you can feel comfortable in destroying or cutting out what you need to. Uh, the blood print development, we used a a blood protein specific chemical called acid fusion. It is one of many that are available, but it is one of the better ones, one of the ones that are commonly being used. Uh, it will stain the blood print kind of a dark cranberry color and make it more visible to the latent print examiner who's gonna be doing the comparison. Uh, there are others out there such as Amido Black, uh, Hungarian Red, which is very much like acid fusion, Kumasi blue Kraus stain. Uh, for the basic class, we chose to do uh, the acid fusion. We also just did a comparison of two blood detection techniques. Luminol is one. Luminol has been around since 1937. Uh, came to the forefront by a gentleman by the name of Dr. Walter Speck. We used Luminol and compared it to a chemical that's been out a few years called Blue Star. Both of these chemicals are used to find blood that is very difficult to see or blood that has been cleaned up at a crime scene. Our comparison of the two chemicals uh, proved the Blue Star to be much more luminescent, held the luminescence of the uh, blood much longer, made it much more easier to photograph and or videotape. And the solution real well. The better I shake it, the longer it will last. If I shake it real well, I can spray it for about half an hour.